Since we've already demonstrated how to do Category 1 vivacious, let's go through the talking points for the rest of the categories. Voluptuous wines, in terms of their sensory properties, are by definition higher in alcohol and richer in texture than the wines that fall into the vivacious category. The difference might only be a half or a 1% difference, but you can feel it in the textural richness in the mouth. That's one of the reasons these voluptuous wines are better suited for pairing with heavier foods, the kinds of things that we serve in colder weather in the wintertime and at night, rather than things we serve in the middle of the day in hot weather. It is very much the case that most of the voluptuous wines in the Boisset collection are 100% Chardonnay and barrel fermented, enough that you can smell and taste that cognac or bourbon-like accent that comes from treatment in barrels. However, there are a handful of wines in this group that are not barrel fermented and are not particularly high in alcohol, but those get their concentration of flavor and unctuous texture from extraordinary levels of sugar, the dessert wines in the late harvest and ice cider categories. When we look at the third category, elegant, these are the lightest and brightest of our red wines, but also those that have the most marked high levels of acidity and low levels of sugar. That style that I refer to as food oriented is very much a European approach to winemaking. What I mean by that is that the elegant wines are those that are fermented a little leaner, a little drier, made deliberately to have a little more acidity than we necessarily like alone because those characteristics are so flattering when we sit down at the dinner table. The elegant category are inspired by the French red burgundies in the Boisset collection, including everything from the anonymous everyday Bourgogne Pinot Noir all the way to the Grand Cru Clos de Vougeot. These wines have tremendous character. They have an earthy spin to their flavors and definitely a different approach to the Pinot Noir grape than we would see in California. And that food-oriented sense of priority is what places a wine in the elegant category rather than one of the others on our red wine spectrum. Generally speaking, you can count on these elegant wines to have a red fruit flavor profile, to have elevated levels of acidity, to be unusually dry, and definitely to make your mouth water when you take a sip because they are designed for food. You could take the same grape variety, Pinot Noir, however, and allow it to ripen a little longer on the vine or grow it in a warmer place like California's Russian River Valley. Sensuous wines have more ripeness, more fruit aromatics, and that makes them easier to drink on their own. However, they do not have quite the intensity of alcohol or concentration to push them into the fifth group of powerful wines. Almost all of the wines in this category are California-grown Pinot Noirs. However, some wines made from softer red grapes do occur in this category as well, like Merlot and Syrah. Sensuous wines are crowd pleasers in more than one sense of the word. Not only are they ideal for relying on when you're in a restaurant and don't know if everyone's ordering the same type of food, or haven't entertained this group of guests at your home before and are not certain of their wine style, but sensuous wines also represent an ideal category for gift giving. If you're not certain of someone's style but know they like red, you can be certain they'll enjoy the wines in the sensuous category. Our fifth and final category is the powerful reds. These are the steakhouse classics that have deep color, intense flavor, and tremendous intensity of mouthfeel that comes from a higher average alcohol content than the other red wine categories. Powerful wines are made from thicker skinned grapes like Cabernet Sauvignon and Syrah, or in the case of the Sheriff, this blend is dominated by Petite Syrah, another powerful grape. These wines have that steakhouse quality to them in the sense that they are designed for big, bold flavors, like what we find when we serve red meats. They've also got higher alcohol content than either of the other red wine categories and are more likely to have a stronger oak flavor in the flavor mix. Of all the group, they're also fairly tannic, which means that they do not pair as well with vegetable dishes and seafood as they would with foods that have some of that dairy fat richness from butter or cheese or red meats. And that's very much what puts them at the end of the meal when we're doing a long tasting dinner. Powerful wines let us finish on a high note at the end of our tasting with concentration 
and power. Deep, dark, black fruit flavors that have a little whiff of coffee and chocolate. All the kinds of things that make you go, mmm. Think of it as a spectrum of style where we move from lighter and milder to heavier wines that get bolder in flavor. As we move from vivacious and voluptuous through elegant and sensuous and finally end with the powerful wines.